Well, good morning. Um, it's March the 22nd, and uh, we're having Sunday school. It's from my home today. Uh, we're not able to meet uh, at the church um, because of the uh, coronavirus, and our lives have changed, haven't it? But God's not changed, and so here we have it, the coronavirus, uh, um, a plague, like the many Bible plagues. There's no one that really likes to mention that uh, God is involved in this. There's no mention about uh, God. Uh, good morning, Sharon. Uh, good morning, Doris. Uh, but uh, this is something that um, has historically been all through the Bible and all through history that um, God sometimes wants to get our attention, but he's not doing a very good job of it because all we see on television is we can do and what our doctors can do and what our scientists can do and what America can do and what our president can do and and all of this but um, not acknowledging God and um, I go back to this that he's trying to get his attention around the world and um, God says if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way then will I hear from heaven uh, and I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. So we need to repent and we need revival in America and around the world and God's getting our attention with the plague, the uh, coronavirus plague. Proverbs 22 for the day of the month um, starts out Proverbs 22, 1, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor than silver and gold. You know, wealth isn't, you know, there's many wealthy people and people that have things that don't have a good reputation or a good name at all. And they're, um, that's the truth of the matter. But have a good name, be an honest person, be a real Christian. And if you're born again, you ought to live a, a decent life and a, a life that honors God. And they'll say, well, my, you know, they're different and they're not they're just not like a worldly person do worldly things and they're honest they're helpful have a good name how important it is um, I think a Dor uh, Doris out there watching this morning uh, 96 years old and she has a good reputation all her life a good Christian woman and helpful and loving and people just love to be around her she has a good name how about you how's your name Verse 20, uh, verse 2, Proverbs 22, the rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. God is no respecter of persons. We respect rich people and we kind of shun poor people and put them aside. That's kind of the way it is. And the homeless aren't cared about. No one cares about them and they don't matter. And, and um, but the poor, but the rich are honored and everything. The Bible says in verse 2 of Proverbs 22, the rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. So God's no respecter of persons, and everyone must come and humble themselves beneath the mighty hand of God. Verse 3, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. You see, you need to be prudent. You need to, you need to be careful and... Uh, you need to foresee evil coming. Something, something's coming your way that isn't right. Uh, it just doesn't sound right. And just get away from it. Get away from them kind of people. And get away from those kind of things. You foresee the evil. And you hide yourself from it. Um, but the simple dummies, uh, sinners, pass on and are punished. God is a, a just God and he punishes by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Humbleness. Proverbs 22, 4, I watched again. I, I see a lot of these uh, TV preachers and these big organizational uh, television people. They, they, gather, they gather around each other on uh, this music of theirs. I'm talking about the Maranatha uh, from the uh, chapel ministries out in California. I'm talking about them. the Hill song from Australia, Brian, um, uh, whatever his name is, um, their leader. I'm talking about the Passion, the Music Church, uh, 
there in Atlanta uh, that um, had that great gathering, 63,000 at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium and, and uh, with all the music there with the passion singers and yet having um, telling these 63,000 that they have to realize who they are and roar, easier, roar. Realize who you are. Well, he's trying to tell you you're somebody when you're nobody. And Proverbs 22, 4 says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor. Not realizing you're some. Oh, you know, they're very tricky, especially this this Louis Giglio. He's, he's a tricky one. He's a little harder to figure out than Joel Olstein. Joel Olstein, just, he's easy to figure out. But Louis, he's a little different. Uh, he mentions the blood of Christ, and he mentions the death burial. He mentions Christianity. He mentions this and that. But he doesn't tell you how to be saved. He doesn't tell you to repent. He just has to say Jesus. He talks about Jesus paying for it, and that he paid for our sins, and he died, and he shed his blood and all this. But it doesn't tell you you have to repent. He just tells you you have to recognize that, recognize who Jesus is, and if you recognize who Jesus is, then uh, what happens is uh, you're okay because you picked the right, you picked the winner. No, it's not a matter about picking Jesus to winner. It's it's uh, above Muhammad and Confucius and all the rest. And, and uh, no, it matters that you humble yourself and repent as a sinner. He never talks about that. He just talks about what Jesus did. And realize who you are in him. That's baloney. Uh, you're nobody. And 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 he he just has another form of the jo of positive thinking uh, religion that'll take you to hell. I looked at his sermon just from the other day. Now again, February or something. At the end of it, uh, his new series on uh, the mind. You just have to realize uh, it's po it's positive thinking foolishness. That's what uh, Louis has. Just like Olstein, just a little more hidden than Olstein's foolishness. Uh, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life, eternal life and real riches that will abide forever and ever and true life, eternal life. 22.5, thorns and snares are in the way of, of the forward and he that doth keepeth his soul shall be far from them. Again, it's talking about Separation from these false teachers and in, in Christian of real Christianity needs to be separate and different. Uh, verse five, verse six, Proverbs twenty two: Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I was trained in the right way, and I got saved at twenty nine. I humbled myself and repented, but my grandparents and my parents trained me up in the Bible. I'm sad to say I have a um, I have a sister, her name is Faith, and I talked with her the other day, just happened to be on her birthday, I didn't even know it, I'm terrible on birthdays, I don't know, my, uh, Andrew, happy birthday, Andrew, it's his birthday today, and I didn't even know that, he was helping me do some stuff yesterday, and he said his birthday's tomorrow, and, and, uh, I've been confined to my home now on a, a lockdown, and, <laughs> I can't go to his birthday party. They're having a party at his house or his family. And, but we're sticking here. This is a wonderful time. This um, uh, You say, what do you mean, a coronavirus? Like, yeah, we can pray and, and we can uh, study the Bible and we can pray for revival and pray that revival will come uh, to our city and that we can have the old time power come, have power from on high. And we can have revival here. This is a good time when we're shut down. Don't don't be upset because you can't do all those worldly things you love to do. Just get with God and read your Bible. But my my sister was fighting me. She's a liberal and she's for killing babies and for abortion. And <clears throat> when I mention that, she goes berserk and and uh, she attacked the Bible. She'd never done that before. See, my mother. When we used to get up in the morning as children, she's three years younger than me. Her birthday was just the other day. I didn't even know it was her birthday. And she said, it's my birthday. And, and here, say you called it on my birthday and attacking abortion. Well, I'll attack it on your birthday or 
any day it's wrong. But she attacked the Bible, and 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 I told her, and she says, "Oh, the Bible," and she was just, oh, really attacking it. And how do you know? And where did it come from? And all this kind of stuff. I says, "You better, you better remember what your mama, what our mama said when we were little. She taught us the song, the B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God." The B I B L E Bible, yeah, that's what that's what we ought to stand on. And and she asked a lot of foolish questions and had the regular attacks of the Bible. So I just sent her a whole bunch of Bible verses for the last couple of days and something that would probably help her. I sent her the whole hundred and nineteenth Psalm, the longest chapter in the Bible, and it talks about the Bible in every verse and. And she she doesn't she does not take the authority of the Bible. And then when I told her, I says, you know, Faith, when we came out in the morning, all we seen our mother do, uh, she was there at the kitchen table reading her Bible. What a wonderful example she was. And I says, you ought to take the faith of your Bible and love the Bible like you. And then she accused me of this. She said that I think maybe the Bible is an idol for you. Oh no. The Bible is God's word. That's that's the real deal. Idols are something that are in place of God. The Bible is the living word, settled in heaven forever. Well, when did it start? Well, she's arguing. The typical, uh, she was attacked the Bible with the typical attacks of infidels and non-believers and godless people. God help her. Uh, and I sent her and my other, my, uh, my two brothers also that. Um, they're getting old. They're going to die soon because, uh, like Doris, like Doris always says, the young may die, the old must die. They're all, they, all of them don't have good health. I'm the healthiest out of the four of us. And uh, those other three, they got bad health, and they're going to cash it in here pretty soon, like I probably will too. I'm 80. Uh, <laughs> the, president, the vice president, he's heading this corona thing, and, and he was telling the young people don't have to worry much about it. And if you're over 60, you do. And he said, uh, life expectancy in America is 80, just like, um, forget it then. And uh, so he said, you don't have to worry about much when you're 80. And, and uh, I'm 80, and I looked over at my wife, and she looked at me. We kind of smiled at each other. <laughs> Doris is 96. We're on borrowed time. We're only promised 70. But... Uh, uh, I, that's what I told them. Um, you better get right with God and repent soon. You're going to die soon and because and you're old. You're old. The old must die. And, and I don't fear death. Uh, I'd like to go today. Come, Lord Jesus. Leave this mess behind. We're about for Jesus to come back, I believe, soon. Then it'll be the tribulation. You talk about trouble. Whew. You talk about worldwide trouble. The way the tribulation comes, seven years of it. Three years, it'll be real bad. In the next three and a half years, it'll be horrible. Scorpions uh, and demon, devil, monster stuff with ugly and stinging you and you, and rocks falling on you and you'll be cursing God, you heathens that won't accept Christ and... and uh, come to salvation, yeah. Uh, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and glory. Proverbs 22, 5, thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. Uh, he that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Separation we talked about. Verse 6, 22, Proverbs. Train up a child in the way he should go. We were looking, talking about that already. My mom and dad trained me right. We were talking about that. Verse 7, the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the rent. And they do that, and rich lorded over the poor, and and uh, uh, how sad. Uh, even the Bloomberg, that I guess he's the eighth richest man in the world, spend all kinds of money trying to be president. You can't buy the presidency, and <laughs> he didn't. And but he made some. I forget the exact statement. They were terrible statements about poor people. And how we needed poor people and keep them in their place, the dumb slobs, you know, and he's something else. <laughs> little man. Trump called him shorty or something, the little man, what little short guy. <laughs> 
he told Trump, he said, I measure a man from his from his neck up. <laughs> he's a little short man. Had a little I guess he has to have a little box when he gets up to the speaking podium. <laughs> he that hath a beautiful eye shall be blessed. I'm sorry, he that hath a bountiful eye. Beautiful eyes are nice too, but he that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed. For he giveth of his bread to the poor. You people, God bless you. I got some faithful people that are even supporting now, you know, in this time of of wonder and stocks. Um, poor Trump, he, he bragging so much about how he made the economy so wonderful and and it was going to break 3,000, now it's down to 2,000. It's down lower than when he became president. He can't do nothing about it with all of his ability to make trade deals and and uh, all the things he did. But he's got to acknowledge it. I, I've yet to hear him say on there, God help us. And and I did what I could, but this plague, Lord, uh, needs to repent. The president needs to repent. America needs to repent. Uh, he that hath a bountiful eye, he giveth bread to the poor. Just uh, thank, thanking especially you that are continuing to to give, like Doris and others uh, that give to the work of helping the poor. And there's a blessing for them. And as we receive it, and some are fearful now because their uh, money is some might not have the money to give now, but there are still some that are supporting the poor and supporting our ministry. Praise God. Uh, verse 20, 10, chapter, Proverbs 22, cast out the scorner and contention shall go out. Strife and reproach shall cease. You know, a scorner, that's someone that's always mad. Everything's always wrong. Griping and complaining all the time. Get rid of them. Don't hang around them. Cast out the scorner and contention shall go out. Contentious people that are always making a fuss. I don't like to be around them. Verse 11, he that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. Oh, you even make friends with politicians and kings and leaders uh, if you have a pure heart because you have grace in your lips. You're not a contentious person. You're not an argumentative person. You're not fighting all the time. I got to speak to myself on that. I got to watch myself. I got to keep my heart pure and quit fussing with folks. I, well, they're wrong, and I, I fuss with them because they're wrong. I guess I don't understand. Verse 12, the eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, and he overthroweth the words of the transgressor. Oh, boy. Them liar, crooked people. Proverbs are good. You ought to read them every day. I read it every day. It's the day of the month. Read the 23rd tomorrow. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. And he that is of whore of the Lord shall fall there. And watch out for the whores. Watch out for Jezebel. They're out to get you, buddy. It talks more about strange women than it does about, they don't talk about strange men because God just made it that way that women can entice um, a man to adultery and fornication and they'll, do, they'll use their wiles on you. Watch out, stupid. You go like an ox to the slaughter, as another proverb tells us. Verse 15, he that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want it. That happens all the time. We've seen these rich, they had some rich politicians now before their stocks went down. One of them, I forget which one it is, but their their husband uh, runs the stock exchange. And all four, they've got four of them now. They, uh, they sold off stocks and saved millions of dollars because it's called inside trading. During their right, they said, we didn't know nothing. We just have someone take care of that for us. And, and uh, uh, like what's called it, they're doing the same thing that uh, uh, Martha Stewart did. She went to jail for it. Not for long. It went to a sissy jail. It wasn't a real jail at all either. But these four, um, I think they're all senators in the Senate, I think, and 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 save millions of dollars because they sold when it was at three thousand and now it's two thousand, and they've saved millions of dollars because of their crooked inside trading. They had information that they had obtained because of their privilege of being a senator, and then they sold their stock, and uh, they ought to be held to account. They probably won't because politicians get away with that crap all the time. Biden 
uh, with his son and all that millions and a billion and a half from China. Politicians are so crooked. Republicans and Democrats, I'm not picking on one or the other. We have in them senators there, Republicans, they're all the same. The swamp is the same. Verse 18, for it is pleasant thing, if they keep them within thee, they shall with all be fitted in thy lips. Oh no, verse 17 goes with 18, I'm sorry, 17. Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise of, of true wisdom that are found in the Proverbs that Solomon wrote. He, he asked, God says, you get anything you want? He says, I want wisdom. The words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. The, word, the words of the Bible, the, that's why I want you to read the Proverbs every day. For it is a pleasant thing if they keep them within thee, they shall both all be fitted in thy lips. That thy trust may be in the Lord. Amen. Not in, in my, my sister. Boy, shame on her. Fighting me for telling tell her the Bible. The Bible her mother lived, loved and cared about. How sad. Shame on you, Sister Faith. You need her. And she's so upset because I told her, called me to repent about being for abortion on my birthday. Well, yeah, I'll tell it to you on any day, especially your birthday. That the trust may be in the Lord, I have uh, made known to thee this day, even to thee. Verse 20, have not I written to thee excellent things? Yeah, you have read excellent things. Uh, Solomon and uh, and consuls and knowledge, the, the, the word of God. That I might make thee to know the certainty of the words of truth. The Bible, sister faith, the Bible. I'm sending this to her. She probably won't even listen to it, turn it on that thou mayest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. 22, 22, rob not the poor because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause, the poor man's cause, and spoil the soul of those that spoil them. Rich folks take advantage of the poor. It happens all the time all around the world. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man thou shalt not go. Stay away from them troublemakers. Least thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Yeah, you'd be just like him hanging around him. If thou hast nothing to pay, uh, why should he take away uh, thy bed from under thee? If you have nothing to pay. Uh, trying to get some relief to poor folks and just making it from hand to mouth. I hope they do help them out somewhat, and they're making some legislation for that now. The president's going along with it. Remove not thy ancient landmarks that thy fathers have set. Verse 29, Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before men. Be honest, be straightforward. Well, that's the 22nd Psalm. We're going to have church in a while. Uh, tune in, uh, tune back in a little after uh, 10, yeah, around 10, a little after, probably, I, I don't have the singing and stuff for, it's probably right about 10 o'clock, I start at 10 o'clock, and it's 9.31 now, so about a half hour, you turn back, and uh, we're going to be in the, uh, in the Old Testament, we can learn a lot from the Old Testament, and and we're there. Uh, we've gone so far. It's my. It's March already. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We're in Joshua. It's telling of the leadership of Joshua, that man of God, that took over from Moses. And that'll be a blessing. And we'll be back at ten. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to Sunday school. We'll be back in a little bit.